Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines we have for you today. As the verdict is on the horizon for the SEC versus Ripple case, we're going to hear from one legal analyst about when he thinks it may end. And you're going to want every bit of that. And then we also have this Ripple XRP challenging and taking on a $280 trillion market. Oh, this is going to get good, ladies and gentlemen. We got TA for XRP from Eggrag Crypto. Things are looking pretty good. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook for exclusive content. Right now, we're at $888 billion for the cryptocurrency market cap. It's off by 0.4%. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Bitcoin, 16,900 plus. Ethereum, 1,200 plus. Tether market cap right now, 65 billion. We're watching it. XRP is 39 cents. It's off by 2% on the seven day, ladies and gentlemen. Look, in all this uncertainty, I have been collecting and topping off my gold, my physically allocated gold, which by the way, you can receive if you choose to also through Glint. But what I love about it is I can top it off. I'm 1% in, 1% out the door. And if some things jump off to be really bad economically and you're holding your physical gold, do you think you're going to get spot price that is really favorable for you during a time like that? That's why I'm accumulating physical gold on my MasterCard debit card here with Glint because I can spend it like regular money. I tell you, if you check this out, this is one of those things where you, once you start doing it and you get set up and it's, it's very easy to get set up, you will not go back the other way. It is quite a feeling during all this time of uncertainty. Check out the link to the sponsors underneath of the channel in the video. This is a reminder. I'm not going to play this clip, and it is amazing. I encourage you to go to my Twitter. We have a lot of information to go over today, but I encourage you to go watch it because ETHgate cannot be forgotten, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot let SBF, the FTX collapse, overshadow ETHgate itself and the free pass for Ethereum. We must keep the pressure on because the facts are not in dispute. That is the truth. Shout out to Stephen Hubert, who's done so much for the community in that space. Michael Branch tells us that Brian Armstrong talking here, the Coinbase's CEO on stolen customer money, talking about SBF and FTX. He said they had this solvency issue instead of just letting it blow up. Sam basically said, hey, we have a bunch of customer assets over here at FTX or he somehow basically made a loan from FTX into Alameda trying to prop it up. I don't know why he did that. Well, we don't either other than our own speculation. He goes on to say here, once this page loads, I'll show you. He goes on to say in this particular clip, I don't care how messy your accounting is or how rich you are. You're definitely going to notice if you find an extra eight billion to spend. What an amazing point that is. Even the most gullible person should not believe Sam's claim that this was an accounting error. It's stolen customer money used in his hedge fund, plain and simple. You're damn right it is. And as I tag Maxine Waters and Andrew Sorkin and CNBC, who have propped him up to be the next JP Morgan and crowned him to be the next leader of a financial asset class, I asked them and I ask all of you, how many people in this FTX collapse have harmed themselves because of losing their portfolios and what they believe is their life savings. Not very funny, is it? Ryan Selka shares with us that the mess may be bigger than we realize. Sorry, this will load in a second here. This is a problem. We need to watch it because this could be the next cascading effect of the FTX collapse. He shows here published an enterprise research piece on digital currency group and Genesis this past week based on reasonable assumptions 
inferences and public records around the grayscale Bitcoin uh, fund as a valuable balance sheet asset and piece of collateral at Digital Currency Group. He says there's one problem. Although my inferences pointed me to the fact that GBTC was most likely held at digital currency parent company level, again, due to public documents, it seems equally plausible that much of this collateral is actually held at Genesis and not DCG. That would not be good. A key assumption in his analysis piece was that there was 600 to 800 million in crypto collateral at DCG. Most of this GBTC and ETH shares that were purchased in 2021 and early 2022, if these assets are spoken for as collateral at Genesis, then it would cut DCG's value by 50%. That would change everything in our model, says Ryan Selkis. It would also suggest that there's a greater risk. Genesis will be forced to sell off millions of GBTC shares per month over the next two and a half years in order to pay creditors. That would also reduce the incentives of DCG to pursue the ETFs. This is still developing, but I am less optimistic today than I was earlier this week when we published our report. Unfortunately, this will likely remain a black box for some time. Until that box is open, we won't know how long the daisy chain of bad crypto credit extends. Brace yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Brace yourselves. And I tell you what, what's refreshing in all of this? It's Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, and everybody associated to Ripple and XRP. He said it a day on day one, we will aggressively fight to clear rules for the entire industry in the U.S. Congrats to all the team Ripple for getting us to this point. Ripple stood strong and withstood the SEC's onslaught. I look forward to being on the right side of justice. And we do too, Brad. We do too. Much respect to you. You know, uh, how this shakes out, nobody knows. But I tell you what, I do want to show you, uh, I, I want to make this point very clear. Look at all of the, you know, fallout that we're seeing happen. Celsius, Voyager, FTX, all of it. There's so many now, you can't list them all. This case, although I believe was a weapon in the early days, has now become a force field, an insulator, if you will, because XRP was taken off over 100 exchanges. Isn't that interesting? Truly, at this point, not being as affected, obviously Bitcoin dominates the charts and prices, but obviously not being as affected at this point as many other entities and projects in this space. Almost a blessing, some would say. Bittersweet, right? But here we are as this verdict is on the horizon. The final submissions are in. There are no criminal charges. There are no fraud. This case is about what it is. Remember, you cannot regulate or legislate what has not been defined. That is the moment we are closing in on. And then there's this. You know, I've been talking about it. It's why I now call the market cap of USD Tether, and I have been talking about Tether's possible demise for a very long time now. And according to John Reed, a former SEC official, he says here much of what we've been saying, and we reported on this interview from Squawk Box from the former co-founder or the former owner, but co-founder, Reeve Collins, who never answered the question about why Tether doesn't show its reserves. John Reed Stark, who I've disagreed with plenty, but I agree with here, Wow, tell us Tether is running a Ponzi scheme without telling us Tether is running a Ponzi scheme. When you listen to his answers as we covered, you will hear the deflection and invasion and lack of responses, and it does make me believe it is a house of cards as well. I have offered as a step further. Imagine what a few subpoenas would do to that market cap of USD Tether. If you are in altcoins, 
And the only way in and out of them is USD Tether. I'm not telling you what to do, but it would probably be wise to ask yourself how you're getting out of that if Tether gets a rug pull. It's worth the it's worth a cup of coffee and the, and the time to think about it. Did you know that there is a shadow bank that oversees $21 trillion worth of money? It has dominating stake in every major S&P 500 company, including all of the news stations on both sides of the fence. It directs trillions of dollars for the Fed, central banks, governments, and treasuries. The global financial ecosystem is ruled by this one company. That's right, it's BlackRock. He goes on to lay it out. Most of you all know that. If you don't, go to Google, pull up the any news company, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, you pull them up, and you see who the largest shareholders are in there. It's BlackRock and Vanguard. They're controlling the news, everybody. That's what's going on. Then there's this idea and understanding that this bill has moved forward to at least an introduction on the floor of the House of Representatives to go back to a gold standard with the Gold Standard Restoration Act. Now, some people believe this is a good idea and some people believe this is a bad idea. I believe it's a conversation we should be having. There's no question about that. And again, when it comes to this case, we are on the verdict of a horizon. The final submissions are in. Jesse Hines says here, so what do we think, everyone? And I encourage everybody to chime in because you never know whose answers could really trigger some real, real good thought. Three months for a ruling or faster, he asks. And I said, for me, my own exercise in patience, I always go with whatever is the longest possible date to drag it out. What is your thoughts on the, on your own question? And he says here, uh, I think we're looking at at least 45 days for a ruling as this isn't open and shut, but this is just a guess. Yes, it is. And no one can know the outcome, but I do appreciate his candor and response on the outcome itself. Whether we're right or wrong doesn't matter. I think it's nice to be able to have access to all of these people as, you know, lawyers that contribute with legal analysis on their thoughts. And I don't need them to be right, but I certainly do appreciate their opinions. No question about it. And let's look at this, ladies and gentlemen, because after we get clarity in this space, this is where the world is headed. I want you to think about a $280 trillion real estate value in the world and that XRP ledger and the tokenization can really aid the change in how an entire industry translates and expresses and moves value. That's what we're talking about here. Real estate assets are notoriously illiquid with only 1% of the world's real estate assets being traded on a national stock exchanges. The XRP ledger is prone to catch the biggest portion of a $280 trillion real estate value. And you wonder why I'm so bullish and me too. But he goes on to point out here, Mizuho Trust, third biggest banking group in Japan, announced its plans to tokenize real estate assets before the end of the year in 2022. And there isn't a damn thing that the SEC in the United States can do about that, now is it? Does that make you feel a little better as somebody who's in the U.S. holding XRP? It doesn't guarantee us a safe outcome. But it does make me feel like these are some of the cornerstone pieces as an investor for me. And I'm not trying to change anyone's mind. It's not financial advice. But these are some of my digital perspectives as I hold this asset in my portfolio. I see these things and see the rest of the world moving to adopt and implement a wonderful technology into the addition of their business models to streamline things going forward. That to me is extremely exciting and understanding that the United States and the confusion there again is not criminal charges, it is not fraud, it is about clarity. And once we have it, I believe we'll see news like this jumping off in the United States as well. It goes on to say here, it announces plans to tokenize real estate assets before the end of the year of 2022, but also MUFFG and Mitsui Trust, two biggest banking groups in Japan, both started tokenizing property assets last year. And you wonder why I'm so bullish again, he says. 
Well, then there's even more reason here. He shows us the falling wedge yesterday, and we saw that, that there's a possibility that we could see a super bullish outcome for that and breaking and and possibly above a dollar. None of these are guarantees, but obviously he gives you the textbook of a falling wedge and what to watch out for, and this is very similar. It says here the failure rate on falling wedges are 8 to 11%. So it gives you a huge indicator that is a stronger percentage chance that we break out, but it's not a guarantee. Be very clear about that. But he goes on to show us this morning a fractal of history that he lays here out from previous chart timing and then lays it over what has currently been happening since last summer And look at this remarkable tracing and how it's lining up perfectly. Well, if that trend were to continue to take place and that correlation continue to follow suit, this is the moment we're in now, we could be very close to seeing a breakout and maybe even it is on December 18th, you don't know. But that would be if it continues to follow this chart. It doesn't have to, right? But, you know, I'm just trying to be very clear here because we're not trying to hype anybody like, oh, it's absolutely going to do that. You know, charts break down all the time. But what I appreciate about Eggrad Crypto is I think it does a great job of showing you the upside and the downside. Because here you see, look, he's showing you where the floor is. This is where the floor is, is 28 cents. And I'm going to tell you right now, he goes 28 cents. And I'm going to do whatever I can to see if I can't buy the rest of it. <laughs> True story. But if it goes by way of the chart, by the, you know, by May, April, May of next year, maybe we're staring down the barrel of a $2.75 XRP. And who'd be upset about that? Not this guy right here. But I'm here for the four and five digits. You can bet on it. And I got a shallow bag that'd be looking down the barrel at that $2.75. You can believe that one too. Look, that's going to do it for me. It's not financial advice for me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.